okay, I've, I've got notes just in case, I panic. I stood in the fish pond naked. Actually, I don't need glasses at all. Don't worry, I was six years old. I was a rural child and naked in the fish pond was the norm. What wasn't the norm was the big truck coming up our drive and the line of limousines behind it. What wasn't the norm was the guitars and the black martial amps inside it. What wasn't the norm were the hairy men coming to my house to make noise. My mother was trying to make ends meet. The big country house belonged to the boyfriend, but the small income belonged to us. So one morning, she sat at the kitchen table and she wrote an advertisement for the Times. And it said, country house available, rehearsal space for bands, no heavy rock. We had to move into the barn. Now, this wasn't some luxury conversion. Uh, this was 1970s English Welsh borderland and it was rats and wet walls, not the world of interiors. I remember the first night it smelled of riverbanks and I had to sleep on a mattress on the floor. It was so cold that I wore clothes and I shared my bed with my Great Dane Cleo and my chicken clucked from a box at the end of my mattress. My mother hated that barn. Most of all, she hated the fact that men who could quite easily sleep in the back of a tour bus were inside the house between her Egyptian cotton sheets. The band set up in the hall because of the acoustics. Still, it was my hall and it was my house and I didn't like the intrusion. Men called roadies had my attic bedroom and these men didn't even play things, they just carried stuff. <laughs> the next morning I woke up to the loud stab of guitar. So I rushed to the front door, pushed the oak, stomped in, walked halfway up the stairs and plonked myself down on the stairs sort of arms across my chest and lips out in a pout. I was six years old. The band below stopped playing. They looked up and stared. A very tall man with a halo of dark hair and a guitar and a smaller man at a piano with black feathered hair smiled at me. Then my mum came in. She said, you haven't seen Tiffany anywhere, have you? The very tall man said, she's just up there, but leave her, she's not hurting. This became my place then. I'd be halfway up those stairs, staring down between the carved oak posts at that band as they played rock and roll, loud rock and roll. And at nights, my ears would ring on the pillow. One morning, Mum was up early. She sneaked into the hall. She told me that the singer was at the piano playing. He was always up before the rest. She could sense that he knew she was there. So he turned and he said, do you like the song? She said, I think it's wonderful. And he said, I think it might be a little bit long. And he turned around again and he went back to playing. That was a nice little break. <laughs> My mother told me that Freddy was a lovely though shy man who didn't mind when our feral cats wandered in. She cooked for Queen. She would cook for many bands over the years. My mother has fed anthems, classics and one-hit wonders. She would have wild watercress delivered and she'd make pike quenelles and or really it was rock and roll cooking for 1970s Herefordshire. The next band arrived in a line of Mercedes and they had funny number plates, Irish, Mum said. When hairy men got out of the first car, she went up to them and said, you're not heavy rock, are you? Ah, oh, no, sure, we're a little folk band. Excuse the Irish accent. Horse Lips were Ireland's leading rock group of the time and they kept the windows open and the music very loud. So much so that soon, squads of police 
cars were at the house knocking on the door and I remember my mother screaming at these policemen because they were convinced that the combination of Irish number plates not far away from the local SAS base in the 1970s plus the music meant that in some way horse lips were related to the IRA. Of course they weren't. I loved horse lips. They were family men. I would sit in my little place halfway up the stairs as a man called Jimmy walked up and down the gallery playing his flute. One day, a black and white dog trotted into the barn, cocked his leg and pissed on a bag of my mother's onions. Whose sodding dog is that, she said. And a man with a beard and Jesus sandals popped his head round the door and said, sorry about that. This was Fritz Fryer. He was Horse Lips producer. Fritz told me that he wasn't German. He was from a place called the North. <laughs> there were lots of other bands. There, were, there was a band called Trax who had wonderful dreadlocks, but they were dyed orange, and they also had a white Rolls Royce. And so we used to get my Great Dane Cleo into the white Rolls Royce and all drive into Hereford, much to my grandmother's delight. Domestically, things improved when Black Sabbath arrived. <laughs> And this is true, <laughs> because the roadies could go home to Birmingham and I got my attic bedroom back. There are lots more stories about Black Sabbath, but I don't think legally I'm allowed to tell them to be truthful. Um, unfortunately, the boyfriend disappeared, and so the house did too. Luckily, my mother's cooking was getting a name for itself, so we moved to the local recording studios called Rockfield, just over the border uh, into Wales, and I loved Rockfield. It socialised me. Clothes were firmly on. There were two resident families, and suddenly I had brothers and sisters. My mother worked every night. Those cooks in the room know that cooking is the hardest job. And so I'd stay with the other Rockfield kids, and we'd watch Hammer House of Horror movies into the early hours. Mum cooked. She cooked... Suckling pig, chili con carne, beef on croute, all those heavy 1970s dishes. She cooked for Robert Plant, maybe Iggy Pop and the one night that David Bowie was there, but I think at the time they weren't eating that much, so perhaps not. <laughs> many, many other bands. She said getting food down Lemmy was the hardest job. <laughs> so that's what my mother did. And one night... I remember I woke with the worst earache, and I don't think I've had pain like it since. Mum was working, I was on my own, and all I could hear was this loud, heavy rock music. And we lived uh, in the courtyard with the bands and where the studio stood. And I remember walking across the courtyard in the middle of the night to the sound of this music. And I pushed the studio door and walked into the control room. And in here, the music was so loud, my, I felt my head was going to explode. And control rooms in those days, they would be smoky, they'd smell, there were dark leather sofas up against the walls. And this night, the man at the control room turned around and he turned the music down, and it was Fritz Fryer. And the band on the black sofas were horse lips. And that night, I slept in an Irishman's lap and forgot my earache, and years later I married an Irishman. I think it was part, part, it was written. And the next morning, the dog came along, walked into my mother's kitchen, pissed on another bag of onions. <laughs> the dog's name was Boggle, and about a year later, Fritz moved in with us, and he became my father. And Fritz taught me how to swim, ride a bike, make a proper fire, my favourite memory is him hoisting me up onto the roof rack of his Morris Minor and me hanging on and him driving around the country lanes at full pelt. <laughs> I love that memory. It's fast, dangerous and silly. Fritz tried to teach me the guitar, but he'd have more luck teaching me about the music that he really loved, cosmic American music, Graham Parsons, the Flying Burrito Brothers, J.J. Cale, the band, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band... And I didn't become a musician, but a writer. And at the launch of my first book, Happy Accidents, he was there and he compiled a CD and it was filled with tracks from Susie and the Banshees and the Specials because it was set in the 80s. And I've realized now that the book 
I have now, Diamond Star Halo, is really, it's a love letter to all that music that Fritz introduced me to. And there's an imaginary band in the book called Tequila, eight beautiful brothers from the Carolinas. And they have songs in the book, and I wrote the lyrics, and Fritz wrote the music. Fritz died about three years ago now, and the last concert he took me to were the Red Hot Chili Peppers in Lisbon, and we sat up on the grass bank with bottles of Sagresh in our hands, and that's a very nice memory. My childhood was lonely. I was an only child, a rural only child, but it was ultimately thrilling because of my mother's random act, that advert in the Times. Um, and it's chancy, retrospectively, opening your house out to strangers while your young daughter wanders around in the nip for most of her life. Um, but my childhood was damp, but it was very firm and secure because my mother was. And I now see that that house filled for all those summers with half-naked male musicians. Were, it was really a house filled with prospective fathers. And... <laughs> God, can you imagine Ozzy? Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but I still can't believe our luck that we found Fritz. Thank you. <laughs>